Okay, so I'm just going to label this up as lead two or something like that. So that's like lead section two. It's kind of mirroring what we did before. You know, we, we had the first drop where it was kind of stripped back, just the bass, and it gradually built up with the drums and everything, and then we brought in the lead after 16 bars. So for the lead this time, I'd, I want to go for something which is maybe a bit closer to the main bass line. So let's see what we can do. Again, I'm going to open up an instance of Massive and just pull out one of those leads that I've already been working on for this for this pack, okay? I quite like the sound of that organ to begin with. And again, with, with this kind of music, I mean, the melodies generally tend to follow the bass line, so I'm just going to kind of copy the copy the main bass line to begin with as like a as a starting point for the um for this new lead. Okay, so I'm just gonna paste that one there. Might shift it up an octave just so, cause it's not a bass sound, it's a lead sound. Just uh shift and up arrow, down arrow to shift an octave. And any of these notes that are muted, I'm just going to unmute them so that, we've, so that we can hear them. Okay. Maybe make this first note longer. Okay, so that's all, that's all fitting quite nicely together. Um, I might just try a few different sounds. Okay, I think there was one that stood out there. I think I really liked that kind of... Uh, I think maybe there's a little bit too much reverb on that one, but I prefer that one over the other one. Maybe take the delay down a bit as well. Okay, so let's just label that up. So massive. And let's call that lead two for now. Color code these as well, keep that going, let's right click and make sure they're all green. And uh, let's just see how that leads on from the previous section. Okay, so that sounds quite cool, but at the moment it really is just a copy of the main bass line. So what we could do is sit down and write a whole new melody, but there are a few interesting things that we have in Ableton that can, that can kind of assist us in writing a melody. So I might just try one of the uh, MIDI arpeggiators or something just to see, just see what that might sound like. I'm going to push the original one over there and just mute it, and I'm going to make this into more of a chord based kind of melody okay so just just kind of taking out the in between notes and focusing on the main sort of notes which are in this tune so kind of e g f down to f again and pretty much the same again I'll leave that bit at the end. Okay, and then the next thing that I'm going to do now, I've kind of got the, the main root notes for this one, is make these into chords. Now, if you know a bit about music theory, you know how to make fifths or triads, minors, majors, whatever. So uh, if I play... E minor on my keyboard, you can see 
we need those three notes. So, and G will be. And then a D to finish off that G chord. Then the F is uh, G sharp and C. And that'll just repeat for the next section of the tune. But we'll probably uh, keep that end section there, that little tail. Okay, and this, this all starts to become clear now when I insert this MIDI effect, which is called Arpeggiator. Okay, and for now, we'll probably just go for this Bach 16th preset. Okay, so that's how that preset sounds at the moment. I'm just going to make a few tweaks to it. Uh, probably add a bit of swing and see how that sounds. Uh, make sure we put re-trigger on notes. Also it's on the velocity just to add a kind of bit of humanization. Okay, so that's that's another variation that we could use. <laughs> let's see how I'm not sure if that really works, but let's see how it sounds with the drums. I think that could sound good later. I think possibly if we bring in this one first, which is kind of following the bass line, let's just um, set that so it's a loop and keep that going for maybe uh, 16 bars. And then we'll come onto this one, which we'll also just command J to consolidate and set it as a loop so it goes for 16 bars, okay? So let's see how that develops. And you notice that the um, arpeggiator still takes effect, and it, it actually sounds pretty cool. I think I'd also like to possibly filter it in as well, and I think that's something which is kind of built into this. So. so let's just gradually modulate macro 5 so it's sweeping up over this section. And then probably do the same for the next section as well, so just duplicate that envelope. But maybe start it a little bit higher. Okay, so let's see how that works. I think maybe, um, maybe that's a little bit too hectic for this tune, so I'm just going to ease off the arpeggiator slightly. Try a few different, try a few different styles. I think up sounds quite good, to be honest with you. And also maybe not bring up the filter quite so high because it does get quite intrusive in the tune. But it could be cool to bring up the reverb a bit.
Okay, so ending with quite an epic amount of reverb there. So this is our new lead section that we've created. And then with everything else, let's just play it from the start of the second drop. And then I'd like that to go back to the lead part in the first drop again. That's probably what we'll use for the replies. Okay, so just to kind of bring back that familiarity from the first drop, I'm going to I'm going to copy this section here and just bring that in after that section, okay? And that brings us that kind of that's kind of what I'd call the reprise section. So let's just label that one up, and uh, that should flow nicely back into it. Let's just give that a try. Okay, so you see how that works, just kind of taking it somewhere quite different for the second drop and then bringing it back to where we were kind of halfway through the first drop, just to, just to bring that back that familiarity before we start to head for the outro of the tune. Okay, so that's it for this module and writing those melodic parts. Obviously, we haven't really mixed them properly yet. I'll probably put some high-pass filters on those, things like that, just to stop them from clashing with the bass. Maybe the reverb gets a bit heavy in places, but again, that's something we can come back to when we when we do the final mix later on. What we'll be doing in the next module is is really working on working on this section here, okay? Because this this breakdown and build-up section here is just temporary, really. And what I'd like to do is leave the drums alone, leave the leads alone, and really focus on the pads and the atmospheric stuff, okay? So that's what we'll be focusing on in the next module. So I'll see you then.